Hello and welcome to Studies of Religion 1 Unit. We are still in uh, the first unit of work, but we have moved on from Aboriginal spirituality to religious expression in Australia, 1945 to the present. What does that mean? To figure that out, we need to look to the syllabus and find the link. Syllabus provides us or yourself with a guide to what you need to learn about and what you need to be able to do. In this particular unit, you need to learn about the religious landscape from 1945 to the present in relation to the following areas. Firstly, changing patterns of religious adherence. That is, a religion that a person identifies themselves as belonging with. So what are the changes in that? And secondly, the current religious landscape. So that is looking at today. In order to do that, you are looking to learn and be able to outline the changing patterns of religious adherence from 1945 to the present using census data, evidence. And secondly, you will need to be able to account for the present religious landscape in Australia in relation to the five following things. One, Christianity is a major religious tradition. Two, immigration. Three, denominational switching. Four, rise of new age religions. And five, secularism. Now these two uh, dot points relate to one another. But, of course, we need to begin with the first one and develop your skills before you will have any idea what to do with the second one. So, let's get started. Okay, so let's begin with the first outcome which requires you to identify the changing patterns in religious adherence from 1945 to the present using census data. Now, before we can go on to content, we need to understand what this syllabus um, outcome means, what you're actually required to do. So, uh, you would approach this in the same way that you would approach breaking down a question. And of course, step one would be to identify the glossary term. And that uh, has already been identified for you as outline. An outline means to sketch in general terms. It's almost like an overview. But what are we outlining? We need to keep reading, obviously. Outline the changing patterns in religious adherence. Okay, so we should look or identify the importance of changing patterns because this tells us that we're looking for a change or shift. But a change or shift in what? Well, religious adherence. But what is meant by the term religious adherence? Well, let's look at the word. For a person to adhere to something... It means that they recognize themselves as being a supporter of or being a part of something. And in this case, we're looking at their religious adherence, so being a supporter or part of a particular religion. We're also provided some other important information within this outcome because we're given a time frame in which to look at, all right, 1945 to the present. We're also told that we need to refer to census data. And this is important because it tells us that we need to support our ideas. And the only way we can do that is by referring to evidence. And you have been provided with such evidence on this page. If you look below, you'll see table 9.1. Major religious affiliations. Now, affiliation, same as adherence. 1901 to 2006. And this comes from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. All right. Straight away, um, I hope that you have noticed that some of this information will be irrelevant to us because we're only looking from 1945 to the present. Okay, so anything on this piece of census data that is before 1945 is not relevant and we can discard it. How do we know that? 
Well, if we look at the columns of this table, the first one we can see year, all right? And if we run down, we will notice first census is in 1901, next 1911, and so on. But we only need post-1945, so how cool is this? We get to eliminate any data all the way up until 1947, which is our first census data from 1945. Okay, so that's cool. But in order for us to give an overview of the changing patterns in religious adherence, we need to understand how to read this information. All right. Some of you will be fairly skilled at this, others may struggle. So let's go through it together before you take over. So the most logical way to approach a table such as this is to go one column at a time. All right. So if we've already identified on the far left column that uh, the years are being provided, then the next column over, we can read that we're focusing on Christianity. Okay, um, underneath that, we see that Christianity is broken up into Anglican, Catholic, but then, interestingly, we have other, okay? And just to give you a little bit of insight, other refers to the Christian denominations outside of Anglican and Catholic, and some examples are Methodist, Protestant, Uniting Church, okay? So other accounts from all other Christian denominations except Anglican and Catholic because they have their own column. All right. Then if we read slightly more to the right, we will get the total. All right. And the total is looking at all of the Christian denominations. Okay. So everything in that column is totaled up on the far right hand side of that particular column. If we move on to the next column, we will see other religions. All right, so this is referring to religions outside of Christianity and the various denominations. Some examples of other religions are Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, even New Age religions. To the right of that, in our next column, we have no religion, all right, which fairly obviously refers to people who do not associate themselves with any religion, Christian or otherwise. Okay? But to the right of that, we have not stated or inadequately described. Okay? So this column can refer to people who do follow a religion, but they haven't identified themselves as following that religion in this census data. Or they've made some type of error and they couldn't read their information, okay? Um, or they do not associate themselves with a particular religion, okay? And what you'll find out later is that prior to 1970s, there was not the option to state no religion. So those who did not associate with a particular religion had to check the box not stated, okay? And then... To the far right column, we have the beautiful total. Okay, and that refers to the total um, amount of um, votes cast, in a way, um, across all of the uh, religions or no religions. Okay, so all of this information is in the total. All right, and furthermore, we can recognize that all of the information is documented as a percentage. Okay, so now that we have figured out at least what each column stands for, we can start looking for trends. Okay, and the way you would do that, again, you would go column by column. Okay, so you would begin with the Anglican column and you would look at the data in 1947 and you would see that the percentage of the population that identified themselves as Anglican is 39.0%. In 1954, this was 379 So we can identify that there was a drop in those 
and the amount of people who identified themselves as Anglican. In 1961, it was at 34.9%. So again, we see a drop. In 1966, 33.5%. Again, noticing a trend here, people, we are dropping. All right, and this continues in 1971, 1976, 1981, 1986, 1991, all the way through to 2006. Okay, so Anglican is just dropping. Alright, if we go over to the Catholic column, we can see in 1947 that the percentage of people that identified themselves as Catholic was at 20.9%. In 1954, it's at 22, so there was a rise. In 1961, 24.9, so again, there was a rise. In 1966, 26.2, again, a rise. 1971, 27.0, so you're, hopefully you're following here. Pretty simple, very basic numeracy, skill, numeracy skills here. But what's interesting, in 1976, whoa, we see a drop to 25.7%. Uh, but oh, in 1981, Catholics are all over the place. We go back up to 26.0. And this is maintained in 1986. But in 1991, we go up again. All right. But in 1996, down to 27.3, uh, and we continue to drop down to 2006, where the census data records that 25.8% of uh, people identify themselves as Catholic. Okay, so you get the picture. Hopefully, at the moment, very, very simple. You're just looking at an increase or decrease in data. So what I want you to do, uh, this table is located on Edmodo. I want you to download it and I want you to record the shifts. Okay, so when it increases, when it decreases, just the way we have done it on this table. So pause this video until you do that. Once you're done, return to me and we will look at some more information. Cheers. All right, so if you're listening, I am guessing that you have finished with that census data and yours should look just like this. Ta-da! I also find that uh, colour coding makes it a little bit easier, but that's because I'm a visual learner. Okay, so uh, now that you've done with that... The next thing that I need you to do is make sure you get it. So in dot points, I want you to put this in writing. Only has to be short, but it's essentially a summary or an outline of the changes in religious adherence post-1945 all the way to 2006, um, according to the census data that you've been provided with. If you can put this into words, then I have no doubt that you get it. So, you think you've got it covered? Think you can break down census data? Well, let's try another one. As you can see, Table 9.2, again, looks at change in religious affiliations from 1996 to 2006. Again, this is provided by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, 2006 census. You will notice for this particular table, you are provided with different information to the previous table. And by different, I mean you, you are given more specific information regarding the various religions, uh, those that fall under Christianity and those that are non-Christian. So, um, I want you to break down this table in a similar way that you did to the previous table, 
All right, so acknowledge what you're actually being told and then go through in order to identify patterns. Let's see how you go. Pause this video, return to me when you're done. Welcome back. If you are listening again, then I'm going to assume that you have finished breaking down table 9.2. And your table should look something like a uh, psych. Now, I'm not going to give you the answer. You need to check yours with the person next to you, discuss it, make sure that you get it. Okay, so just one more activity. Please, stick with me. You just completed breaking down a table that looked at data from 1996 to 2006. What I need you to do is to use the table on this page um, that accounts for the 19, sorry, the 2011 census data. And I want you to compare and contrast that with the data presented in the 2006 column. All right, um, looking at the increase, the decrease, what stayed the same. And I just want you in your books to, in, in bullet points, write a summary of um, the patterns that you notice that are emerging within this census data. Um, you can work in pairs, discuss your ideas. Okay, um, do that now. Thanks. All right, so that wraps us up for now in terms of your first outcome where you need to outline the changing patterns of religious adherence using census data. Uh, keep working with those tables if you're struggling. Um, otherwise, this is the end and goodbye for now.